YouTube, we are in the top 16. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing as much as you can so we can continually update and upload these decks and tournaments and all these highlights for you. You got the full top 16, top eight, and grand finale will be after with the deck list. Hajime. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. Astra is going to be linking this off into the Lightheart. Lightheart's going to be grabbing the Field Spell. Field Spell will be searching our deck for a right card if we didn't already have it. Instead, we're going to be searching for a Star Frost. Let's go. Summon and search for a Scareclaw Kashtira, which we could summon during the next turn. So how do we play through this? Our monsters are stuck in defense. The tryhards unaffected from monsters that activate while in defense. Is there an arrival in the graveyard? There isn't, so it, it will be destroyable. But he's going to tribute the acro to pop two, and then our link monsters can't activate, and they'll negate. Good luck. Oh, well, we could have used Hobnis. Special summon the unicorn, put it into defense, activate to search our deck. We got birth, which could be a summon of a cash tier if we had one, which we don't. Jackalope discarding the Rhino. Rhino could activate discarding a tier limit, plus sending a tier limit from the decks of the graveyard. Scream activating to search for a tier limit trap. So we're gonna get ready to fusion summon. Now the twin saw only stops link effects, not fusion. But it's still gonna pop two cards in the field. Sending a tier limit cash Tira to mill two cards off the top of our deck. And we're now gonna be using Birth to reborn a cash Tira onto the field. Now we're gonna chain destroy the birth before it act before it summons that is it is activated but if it's not on the field on resolution no summon rhino heart's going to get banished since it was summoned from the graveyard we are now going to be linking this up in the dark now if there's a dark monster in the graveyard we could use the twin saw right now banish twin saw and the dark cannot activate there we go you doing it dark can't do anything we're going to summon hovness and then end our turn now, because we have Havnis, we could flip any card in the field face down, plus trigger a fusion summon. We could also negate any monster in the field. So we could negate the Baron to floor or negate the Tryheart. Now, we gotta be careful here. As soon as there's a third monster in defense, the field spell will be activatable to pop anything in the field, plus the Baron to floor will pop a card in the field. The, okay, we're replacing the field spell with the Planet Pressure, Cash Tier 1. We're gonna use Meta Noise to flip down Baron to floor, but it is going to be negated by Ash because part of the effect is to send a tier limit from the deck to the grave. Thus, you do not get to flip face down. Negate. Now, we're going to get the effect, grab in the cash tier of Fenrir, which we can't summon right now because there is a Baron to floor blocking its way, plus the Tryheart scooping. Okay. <laughs> scooping it up. Right cart with special search for arrival. Arrival with special. We would set up at least three to four attacks with our tryhard plus piercing battle damage plus it would be boosted it would have swept the entire field plus attack directly multiple times scareclaw cash tira is a deck that i am predicting it's a sleeper deck it's going to do very well in the duelist cup but no one's going to see it coming wow did not maxi early so we lose out on that gamma play unfortunately we're going to be chaining Maxi to the activation of a fusion. We're going to be Ash Blossom negating the Maxi. Now, we've got to be careful about Curry Kara. If we activate any of our monsters during their turn, Curry Kara is just going to tribute them without even activating. We're turning back in the deck. Rhino in Havnis. Come forth. Kid Kalos. Kid Kal sending from the deck to the graveyard a tier limit cash tier to mill an additional two cards here. Kid Kal sending itself to reborn. <laughs> Hey, it's Merly. Merly has grown up. Merly banned. Now we're going to be summoning you. Okay. <laughs> Merly at home. Uh, on summon, mill three, just like Merly. Okay, mill five. The mill eight combo is here. It, it actually mills more. It mills 10 because the initial send to the graveyard. We're going to be searching for a Sharon with the effect of the Silly being sent to the graveyard, discarding our card to summon Sharon, mill three, trigger the effect of Meta Noise to add the Rhino Heart and the Graveyard back to the hand. Now we're going to be summoning itself onto the field as a level three by reducing our life points by half to now make a Baron to floor. Tier Limit's cooking. I'm liking this. Now we are going to be making Time Thief Redoer, which could send the Sharon to the graveyard by card effect to trigger a fusion. All right. Single Omni Negate. Time Thief Redoer sucking up the top card of the deck. It's nothing too good. And it gets Kaiju, not Kaiju, but Kurikara, which is essentially a Kaiju. 
even with the Baron of Lore, a single Curry Kara outing the entire field was not able to fuse, was not able to negate with Baron. One card, we did lose our battle phase. Let's go. Wait, he's ending main phase two? We're done with our turn? Or no, okay, that was bugged. That was the end of the battle phase, it looked like. Gamma negate the Rhino Heart. Uh, we cannot call by the grave the Gamma because it does not discard itself. So that is going to be negate and destroy, but we do have triple tactics thrust. Thrusting a card into the hand, which will be the talents. Talents will be draw two. We did use up our normal summon already. Get that draw two. A field spell. Now we're going to Scare Claw Cash Tira, which the field spell could search for a monster that will be summoned alongside the Cash Tira. Scare Claw, that is. Lightheart searching for another field spell, just feeling out more disruption. This was a bait. Activate, search our deck. Now the right card already activated. It's hard once per turn to search the deck. Asa. Asa reborn in Earth from the Graveyard, which is going to be a Fenrir. Fenrir can activate to search our deck for a Cash Tira, our own Fenrir. Ain't no way. That worked out really well. Asa could also take a Max C. King of the Swamp, <laughs> limited to one for some reason. We have Call by the Grave, banishing the Rhino Heart in the Graveyard, negating the Rhino Heart in the field from sending a tier limit from the deck to the Grave. Negate. Now, uh, search for Palmerization, then nothing to Palmerize with. Yeah, that's a 2-0, wow. Scareclaw, Cash Tira, defeating Tier Limit, but I would say a Tier Limit was quite impressive. Besides getting easily added by that Curry Kara, that was quite unfortunate there. Let's hop on another duel. Auto E. Now, I know this is controversial, but what's really good about it is banishing cards that work with your Arise Heart. Because the Pot of Peas is limited to one, we don't really have as much access to those cards. And let's see if it happened. This could also go horribly wrong. Oh boy. Arise Heart's banished. Uh, two Arise Heart's banished. A third one almost got banished. Ain't no way. Now, randomly banishing the Goliath is what will make your Arise Heart indestructible by card effect, which is what you want to ideally randomly banish. And then Ash Negate. All right, so the Banish did not screw us, but it almost did. And no Goliath Banished, unfortunately. Also, no card that we could really interact with. Planet Pathfinder searching for the Pressure Planet. This is making Droll and Lockbird a better counter against Cash Tira, where Droll wasn't good in the TCG. Also, not good in OCG. Droll good against Purely. Pretty good against Cash Tira, as long as you're not activating it on them adding a Theosis. If it stops them from getting Theosis, then it becomes good. Is there, what's a good way for, um, yeah, maybe I don't want to share that. Yeah, uh, I don't want to get anyone in trouble. Shangri summoning Unicorn from the deck here by activating this monster. A lot of cards are going to get triggering. We can now banish from the extra deck. We can now Fenrir banish. We now gain a third material for the Arise Heart. We can now banish any card on the field face down. If you activate the Sprite Starter and you have three cards in the graveyard, we're going to banish them face down, but it's not possible because everything's getting banished. Ash being usable while you have Arise Heart is really good. Maxi not usable. Veiler not usable. That's why a lot of people are now playing Moonlit Chill, which is activatable with an Arise Heart on the fields. Banishing from the extra, a trouble sunny. And now we are going to be locking up a zone and we do have the quick effect to banish anything face down. Using up the normal summon here. What's gonna be ideal is if we also field spell popping it. Oh my, <laughs> we didn't even use the Fenrir to banish. Wow. Uh, all right, and we lock up the third zone. He summons a monster, we banish it. Then we lock up a fourth zone, four zones <laughs> locked up. That's too much, let's hop in the next game. You only watch on Twitch? That's perfectly fine too, thank you. We're gonna be maxing the Leela, which is gonna be allowing us to use the Triple Tactics Thrust to add a card to our back row, not to the hand. This is why some people are preferring more talents than Thrust, because talents would be great here. Adding the Frost, we're really committing to that Max C. This is getting scary. Do we allow this to even happen? Do we just negate or we do get, get a draw off of the summon? We're not going to allow it. Ash is going to negate. This is why I like playing Dimensional Barrier. I know it's toxic. I know it's considered a nasty floodgate, but instead of having to commit to all these summons, I would just thrust, set my D barrier. You're the one who maxied me. Then I end my turn. And then D barrier should hopefully get us another turn. 
I'm only promoting the card to counter toxicity with toxicity. And we got, I mean, we are under Max C. What is going on? This is top 16. We're going all the way. Ross, because you drew a card off Max C, we're going to be adding a card off the top of the deck. Special summoning the carrot. We could carry it, negate the key secure, uh, negate the imperm from negating the key secure, that is. So we do get to summon a blue. And this actually works out because we then make Leela, reborn, key secure, draw a card. But again, we're under Max C. <laughs> what is going on? Eight cards, nine cards. He's going to draw into a 10th card. You, Swassy Senpai, have you given up already? Are we even attempting to win this duel? Trouble Sunny, now 11 cards. Now we're going to thrust a... What just happened? This is Live Twin. This is Sprite. And you just thrusted a big welcome labyrinth. <laughs> what? And you're a 40 card deck. What just happened? What is this? You're just teching a lovely in your deck? Ain't no way. Maybe he plays one big welcome, one lovely. Just one. Just one of each. I, I need your deck list. 40 cards. And you got big welcome in your sprite live twin. Okay, we're drawing two off the pot of E. Did the pot of E screw us? <laughs> Tri triple, triple Arise Hearts banished. We drew like 20 cards off of Max C and we still pot of E banish all three of our Arise Hearts and there's no way to get them back. That's it, they're gone. There's no Arise Heart for this entire duel. Oh my gosh. Call of the Grave is devastating here, negating the Trouble Sunny from summoning Kisa Kill and Leela to pop and draw a card, even with triple. Here's the thing. Maybe if Swasi knew that the private knowledge triple Arise Heart were banished, he probably wouldn't have surrendered, but you're the other player's not supposed to know that you triple banished your Arise Heart. That's wild. Wow. Valent World is going to turn off the ability to use cards like the evenly match we can't use in permanence. So we're protected from that right now, but Gamma. Gamma not negating Shimone. That's quite interesting. Maybe we're going to negate Shimone now. Uh, we're really holding on to that Gamma. Okay. Come forth and summon for the back row. We're now going to be linking this off into Alternative Art Mascarina to link off during the opponent's turn, but we can't because the Fossil Dyna. Now, if we put a monster in the same position as the Fossil Dyna, we could push it into the back row with a field spell because we didn't pop the field spell. Kind of interesting. Pot of P, get digging. We got Kaiju, which can't be special summoned because of the Fossil Dyna, even if you send it to the graveyard as a cost of tribute. Just what I said. Because we didn't pop our own field spell, we get the Fossil Dyna pushed and then we get Kaiju. Now, we are going to be special summoning the Petting Sword because we had no monster in the graveyard. Now we're gonna be using the Pudding Sis at the damage step. We're gonna be popping a card on the field after battling. And then we're gonna set up in main phase two. Outing the Fossil Dyna with the Valent field spells. Now we got glass. You put the pudding into the glass and then you detach a material and then you do not trigger its effect to return cards back into the deck. You then make a Chocolate. Chocolate with the pudding under it is going to be able to special summon a Medolce from the deck anytime a Medolce is returned back to the deck. So we're going to use its spell speed one, return back a Medolce, summon Angeli, Angeli, now summon Hoot Cake. Hoot Cake banish a Medolce, summon a Messenger, Messenger if there is a Hoot Cake, search our deck for a Chateau. Chateau is going to be returning a Medolce in the graveyard back of the deck, triggering the Chocolate again, summoning another Messenger, searching for another Medolce Speller Trap, which will be the Salon. Salon allows an additional summon, which will also set up a Promenade Negate in the back row, so get ready for that. We're going to be making a Sistart here. We're going to be triggering the glass from the monsters being sent to the graveyard, adding Kaiju back to the hand, by the way. Recycle the Kaiju. You could recycle Maxi with this deck. Recycle Ash. Salon giving us a Promenade, which will be able to negate any card on the field. Small World, banishing the Kaiju. We return back in the hand to search for Maxi. Oh my. This just happened. 
So what do we really have here? We just have Maxi and a Negate. Uh, everything else pretty much doesn't do anything besides the glass can make one of your monsters unaffected from other monster effects. Maxi preemptively, we got the Call by the Grave Finger, which is going to negate, and we did not use Promenade to negate the negate. Crazy end board, Medulce, they do a lot and don't really, they end on one negate. That's pretty much what they do. Solo activation is going to be negating. You do not get to add a Valent Pendulum from your deck to your Pendulum Zone. I do not think so. And I do think this is the scoop. Salon, Glass gonna get triggered. Let's do, yep, we scooping it up. Setting up turn one Fossil, but we didn't get rid of the Valent Field spell, so they were able to use it against us as we described exactly that happened. So we gotta be careful next time get rid of our field spell, but not the opponent's one because it stops them from using evenly and in permanence. Game one, going to Fictinium. Ooh, we got Lava Golem, but we are going first. We talked about evenly match not being usable because you give them the field spell, but they get to use your field spells also unless you pop your own field spell by the end of your combo. Now, there's a combo if you normal summon to still summon the fossil Dyna, and I don't know if he's playing it. It's a link. It's uh, the the link, the, the the one, the battle boxer, I think. It's the one that it has to point to like an earth, and then you could summon the earth. Raiten, Raten, something like that. Okay, yeah, that's unfortunate. And he doesn't have it. So we're gonna get pop and pop our own field spell and okay, could not use evenly. And we just, we have, you know, Mascarina and the Chrono Chasm could kind of do something here. We're gonna be sending a Fenrir from the deck to the graveyard and now summoning our Pudding Sis. We're now gonna use the Vernissa Lift to discard to then summon the Fenrir we sent from the deck to the grave. Do we destroy it before it activates searching for another Fenrir? No, we let him search another Fenrir which is discard fodder for more of our Vernis lifts. Now, because how this works, it really sucks against Fenrir. It can't destroy the Fenrir before the Fenrir activates off of you activating the effect that triggers your effect. You also trigger the Fenrir. Damn. And now you're forced to use the Mascarina. Boy, this is a problem. We're popping a card, non-target. We're also Mascarina linking this off into Unicorn? But what are we spinning back? Are we going to spin back the Madolce back in the deck? Pudding Sis? Okay. Kill the Fenrir. Discard with Unicorn on Summon. Goodbye, Pudding Sis. And then there's the other Fenrir that we allowed them to search. And Jelly into the Hoot Cake. Hoot Cake's going to be summoning a Messenger. We have no more Disruption. We can't attack into the Unicorn. The Avermax is destroyable by card effect, but untargetable. We have Glass Detaching Material, making the Hoot Cake unaffected from Monster Effects. Chocolate is going to be spinning cards, a card in the graveyard back of the deck to trigger the effect and then summon a Medulce from the deck here. Messenger searching for a Medulce Salon, which will be setting up with our Promenade to Negate. But how do we deal with Avermax? What is the way? The Exceed, this one, where's the one that would deal with it? The Tiramisu. Tiramisu targets, doesn't she? You have to target up to two cards on the field. Wait, wait, it's untargetable. It's untargetable, spin back, no way. So you detach target to Medulce's, that's the only time you target, then you shuffle the opponent's cards without targeting them. Back in the deck, just like that, open field, 10,000 damage. Goodbye to Avermax. Goodbye. <laughs> just like that. Non-target spin. And there's nothing to do. 10,000 damage, Madulce sending the Fenrir to reborn the Fenrir, and that single play completely dealt with the combo. So what should have been done here? I'll talk about it. When he activated the Vernissalith to reborn the Fenrir, we should have known that that's what was happening. So what you would do is you activate the Vernissalith to reborn the Fenrir, you chain link to the Chronochasm right then and there, you move the Mascarina, you move the Chronochasm, Fenrir gets summoned, then the Chronochasm triggers to pop the Fenrir, 
And that's it. You have Mascarina to unicorn whenever you want. So when he follows up into his other Medolce plays, you could then unicorn safely. But because that's kind of a surprise tactic, it was not expected. The surprise factor will artificially always boost up a deck, which is why I like going in tournaments with decks that people are not familiar with. And that's how TCG Fictinium is doing very well with Medolce. Game number three, what happened to game one and two? Some disconnection issues. So we are gonna be ending just on this game for this best of three in the top 16, purely versus Sky Striker, Hajime. Maxi early playing around the triple tactics talent. We're gonna chain Sleepy and chain Happy. So we're gonna double summon before the Maxi draws even a single card, no draw. Summon, summon, and very well done. Within the standby phase here, we are gonna be playing around a Veiler, but it does play into a Drone Lockbird, which as we see, it's not even there. Grabbing the Ma Friend purely. With the five material, we have X purely Noah. We're gonna make a Nightingale, so it's impossible to one turn kill us next turn. Okay, we're gonna instead be setting the leap, which you get to draw more with the Sleepy, but then you give the opponent the ability to disrupt your leap play, which with a card like Book of Moon could flip you down on the activation. But if this pays off, it's a big payoff. It's draw four. Draw one. Draw two. Draw three. And draw four. And your ex Pilinor is bigger. So your ex Pilinor gets an extra spin. An extra spin, an extra draw two, or just leaving yourself a, to be a little bit more vulnerable than you would have been if you were to just summon it on the first turn. So it looks to me like this is worth it. And he was also under max C, so he would have given the opponent another draw. Now we max C, and now we Nightingale. But with the thrust, we could thrust a Herald of the uh, Abyss to our hand, which could then send the Expelli Nord to the graveyard. Do we play that? A lot of people do. Upstart the Goblins, setting up with the Mecha Modules, so we do not play the Heralds. That's unfortunate. Tricking the opponent to activate a Monster Factor in the main phase so that we can triple Tactics Talent draw two into an Upstart Goblin. And now, we are thrusting, thrusting into Engage to make the deck more consistent because we have the Kaiju anyway. Hamp is gonna Kaiju over the X Purely Nor, which we wanted him to activate to use our Triple Tactics Talent. That will trigger the My Friend Purely to return up to three cards in the graveyard back to the hand, but we Nightingale, so you can't one turn kill us. There's no way, it's impossible. Rescue Ace is gonna jump off the field in response to the field spell targeting it to reveal the top three cards to add a Sky Striker card among those three. One, we got Linkage, Linkage to the hand. That works out well. Aya take an attack directly for 1500, but we can't deal battle damage, so we're just gonna swing into the Nightingale, send from the deck to the graveyard our Rose. Now we're gonna be searching for a multi-roll that was dealt with with the X Purely Nor, activating the Sky Striker maneuver after burners, taking out the Hamp and the back row, my friend Purely, now making a Kagari. Can Swordsman stop the Purely Onslaught that's gonna be happening next turn? Very likely they're gonna be one turn killing. We're gonna send the field spell to now summon a ray from the deck. Now you can't chain to our spell activations, making a Zeke. Zeke on summon will be banishing the Nightingale and it comes back during the end phase the next turn, but now it will have no material. Now we got Shiziku to search for a card during the end phase. We're going to be engaging into another Widow Anchor. Widow Anchor is, we could actually search for Widow Anchor, activate Widow Anchor, then set the Widow Anchor. And that's why we're ashing to negate. Because we have no Widow Anchor in the graveyard, that would be the play. So it would have been triple monster negate, but the ash stops it. Negate. We have to deal with Maxi and double monster negates. Leaping our Purely's back in the deck to give us a better draw. An ideal Purely turn is summoning three Purely's onto the field, activating all three. Even better, activating four or five or even six by returning them back in the deck in the same turn. Let's go, let's go. Delicious memory, making the Shiziku indestructible by battle as we're gonna chain the Sleepy to our Delicious so we don't have to special summon off of it to give them a draw under the max seam. Discard to summon the Purely. I mean, we have one turn kill. It's just how well could Swordsman disrupt it? 
We're gonna be using the Widow Anchor now early because I think he's suspecting the setup of the Field Spell. The Field Spell would make the Purely's untargetable from the Widow Anchors. And we don't wanna take control with the Widow Anchor because it will turn off the other one. Did we whiff the Purely? Yes, we did. We didn't add anything off the top of the deck here. My friend Purely trying to get access to that street. We got the street and that's it. You now cannot negate the Purely. You can't negate the Purely exceeds. I think you lose, right? Well, you can't stop them at all. You have a targeting negate and you can't target anything. That's it. You could linkage into Kana, then Kana can't target either. That's your last target. No, you had to negate. <laughs> that was your last negate. You, the only thing you could have negated. Beauty is gonna suck up your Widow Anchor and now Beauty is going to be did you just try to change the bow position of, of the... No, you just negated Shiziku, that is. Of course, you can't do that. You can't activate to change the bow position of a Link monster here. We're going to be keep on... Now we have a double suck. We can suck again. Set, suck, come to me. Linkage. So this is good because we really need Delicious to make the monster indestructible by battle. So by the time we go to battle, he uses Linkage. We destroy the monster by battle. We lose the multiple attacks. By forcing him to use the Linkage right here, right now, we can now make the newly summoned monster, which has to be in attack position, indestructible by battle. And then we have game. Kagari. Very well done. Double beauty suckage. Why did Beauty negate Shiziku? That was weird. Uh, that confused me, because this is where we could have negated. Not that it really matters. I mean, we're going to win anyway. And we're going to be using the Happiness, spinning the back row back. 30, th I mean, it's, it's, the, she's large. So if we negated her, she would not be large. She's huge. 3,300 attack. Did we lose lethal by negating Shiziku for nothing? The heck was that? Do we still have lethal though? This will be interesting. Five material big enough to attack and then reduce it by half. I, I don't know if it's lethal. I really don't know. I don't got the math on me. It's gonna cut it in half. Attack again, attack again, attack again. We have four attacks. I believe three happiness under it. Yeah. So we have two more attacks and then a beauty attack. Is that game chat? What do you think? 4275. Is that the final attack? 1188. And beauty for game. We got it. No way. <laughs> 13, 9 to 3 damage. That was nuts. We may have not had game one and two, but uh, game three was a nice thing to see. Very good. Dimension Shifter Fluanderies. What is going on here? Fluanderies has the field spell limited to one. And I guess they're still cooking. Dimension Shifter also semi limited. You could blame Flanderies for getting the pots limited also, I'd say. We got double purely before our cards. We get to discard our cards before the shifter resolves. So we were able to get the memory and the tactics talent to the graveyard, which we could suck up with a plump. Now we got the play here. This is good. We have X purely nor under dimension shifter. Beautifully done. We're going to be able to make the plump and then we could suck up the sleepy and then that's gonna be triple material. Then we have two in the graveyard that was discarded before the shifter resolved. Wow. And we are now gonna be searching up for any card we want with the my friend purely. Get sucking five material, X purely nor unaffected from activated effects. And we have the ability to spin three cards on the field and our graveyard plus one monster negate. We also draw one off that Fenrir. The rust because, this is it. I, I mean, there's a Lily right there. Don't do it, don't do it. Oh. Probably would have been better to declare fairy and water to send the beauty to the graveyard because uh, yeah, what did that do? It didn't do anything. Pot of pee, dig deep. Are we, we scooping or what? This, are we bricked? Well, I mean, we have the advent. We could, uh, wait, we had nothing to banish the advent. Should we have added something we could have banished for the Avent? I mean, we're gonna get spun back three times anyway. We got the Shry, which we get banished now. Gold Sark, which on the summon of the Shry could trigger the banished card to add back to the hand. Okay. This works out. Book of Eclipse flipping just the beauty, which we could have sent to the graveyard, or I should say banish with the Herald of the Abyss. 
Rabina adding back. Are we spinning? Ooh, this is interesting. So what happens here is the Stry trying to banish the D-Shifter. By not banishing it, you do not get the additional summon. You do not get to summon Rabina. Rabina is not going to be summoned unless you grab the field spell. Okay. Banish Stry. Add the field spell. We're going to have Rabina. We're going to reveal Rabina. But I think Expelinor is going to spin the field spell on the activation of the effect. Thus, Flanderese is screwed. Yeah. Activate. Spin it back, mate. And you do want to wait for the activation of the effect, not the activation of the card. Just to be a little more optimal. Not that it mattered because we knew exactly what's in their hand anyway. Also, flipping up the beauty during the end phase to draw one card. And you do not need me to tell you that this duel is over. <laughs> Scoops it up. Thank you very much. Let's hop into game two. Should I be on kick? If there is a presence on kick, I could try kick also. It's my first time trying a multi-stream, and I think it's going well. And that works over the x Nor. That's quite insane. Make x Nor, we tribute over it. But it's going to be difficult to do that because the x Nor could just spin it back. Discard, summoning the purely. We're not under G-Shifter right now. Randomly reveal three, come to me, sleepy memory. And now we have the My Friend Purely activation from the hand. It's not searching yet. We're going to be resolving the Dreaming Town, summoning the Eglin. We could send the My Friend Purely to the graveyard before it even activates for our tribute summon. Rabina, come back. And we're going to be searching for the Eglin. Now let's resolve it. This is it. Send the My Friend Purely. No. We could still... Uh, no, we can't do it. What's going on here? We did not want to send that. I feel like that would have been a good send, even though they have another one in the hand. Now, Apex Avian is going to be negating, and we do have to be careful about normal summoning. If we normal summon that triggers the map to resummon the Avian back in the field and tribute using your field. So we cannot do that. Triple Tactics Thrust. This would be a good opportunity to grab something like Evenly Matched if we didn't have the My Friend Purely. But we have Harpy Feather Duster instead, dealing with the field spell, which would give that additional summon, and dealing with the Unexplored Wind, which is also very good. Now, don't forget, the effect of Empin. Empin is a floodgate. Anything in attack position that's special summoned cannot activate. But the easy way to out it is going to be with the Pretty Memory. You're going to make a beauty in defense, negate it, or suck it up while on defense, and it's completely dealt with. We now cannot be targeted by card effects on our newly special summoned monster. Just like that, we got the beauty in defense as I outlined. We can now suck it up or negate it. We're going to negate it first. And now we got sleepy. Chain to the sleepy, suck up the sleepy. We want to have five materials under our a monster to make the x nor here. We did not discard happy. Interesting. So the fourth material will be happy. The fifth material will be one of these monsters as we suck them up. Let's get sucking. We're going to send the field spell, suck up the imp in, and now we're making our X purely Nor with triple spin. Dark and No More is not going to work unless we could get them to spin. Spin something, then we could follow up negate. Cody plays your Nick, by the way. Thank you. You said you missed lethal this turn. All is well. We are going to reveal for our pot of P what is coming to me. Our duality. We can't draw, but we can still add with duality. Top three, can't pot of E. Not only because of the pot of P restriction, evenly match could banish the my friend purely, but we're not gonna be doing that. We're trying to bait a spin. If you could spin, we can negate. Grab back the two can. And we gotta be careful with Stry, because if we target a card in our own graveyard with Stry, that's gonna activate the Nor. Is gonna activate it. I feel like this is bait. I feel like he wants them to do it to make them feel smart. Possibly. Yeah, I think so. Now we could Dark Ruler no more, but where is going to be our additional summon? Uh, what do we do? Well, we Dark Ruler no more, then what? We, we can't exceed, can't link, can't additional summon. You negate, then you end your turn. That's not very good. Yeah, but what now? What, what, why, what is this going to do? Whoa! All right, let's go. <laughs> Hold up, we negated and ended our turn. All right. Uh, yeah. My friend, Purely, triple card off the deck, and we're gonna be grabbing that guaranteed delicious. 
detaching the pretty instead of using it to suck up a card in the field plus spin. We're gonna Lily grab the leap. And now we're, oh, we still, do we have another one? We didn't have another one. Did we set that leap because we thought we were gonna get sucked in, but then we realized we detached it? Possibly. Caldbine's gonna be banishing the Lily, negating the Lily on the field so they cannot exceed with it using the graveyard. But we got delicious. Delicious into random purely. We gotta randomly get something we want to exceed into. Randomly. We missed it. No good. We can't use Lily. And what we could do is we could mill the top card. If it's a card that could add to the hand, we could still attempt a purely again, which we need. So this is the Princess Sprite play. Mill a spell or trap. We need it. There we go. Pot of P. Even better, we could just activate the Pot of P. Banishing just three. Come to me. No, we could discard the Ash if we want to. No, we'll just go to the battle phase. Looks like we might be Zeusing. Zero material under the X purely nor. The Rabina was made indestructible by battle. This is not looking good for purely. We just have field wipe and that's it. We could make a monster negate. Beauty, negate, plus field wipe. So that's okay. Activate sleepy, attach the beauty. What do we gain from that, though? Yeah, uh, change the battle position. Uh, okay, we you know, we get to draw one card. We could we draw under the sleepy. That's the main add there, but we didn't draw no hand trap, unfortunately. A rare occurrence here. Being able to exceed with your Flawanderies deck, it requires you to not activate your Flawanderies monster in any way. You can't add it back to the hand. You can't activate the search. Only then can you use the uh, summon of Exceeds. Ash is going to negate the Advent, which the field spell is in the deck, and I do think we wanted that. All right, I got Zeus, you got Zeus, we zeus in, but you got Beauty to negate Zeus. Okay. Ooh. Uh, uh, uh. I, we, we didn't have a Beauty under this to then, uh, you know, attempt to suck it, and then you activate, then you negate it. I guess we're just forcing it. Okay. We lose everything, but we have a Lily in the hand. Lily into my friend Purely. Into... We have Delicious already in the graveyard. So we're good. We can make Plump. Then we could suck up two cards in the graveyard. Then we could suck up a card that we add to the hand with the my friend Purely. Then we can make the X Purely Nor. We got the full combo, just like that. Suck up two. Too sleepy to draw two during the standby phase. Maxi dead in this matchup here. Very good, guaranteed spell, equip it. This, if you chain link block, right, this, if anything, like if you had a Maxi, you just activate it, just to activate it, it would not be able to suck up the card. It has to be the direct chain link to it. Or as we saw in the TCG grand finale, you could suck it up after the card resolves. Purely reveal three. We got a happy memory. Come to me, we could further boost up the plump if we want to. Lily into the happiness, which will search for another card. It could search for another sleepy if the other one's not in the graveyard. The other one is in the graveyard. We could search for field spell. Field spell, equip the sleepy from the grave, draw three during the standby phase. This is huge. We have spin three cards and draw three cards. He's gonna draw into any relevant hand traps here. Ash, maybe, what do you think? Fossil Dyna. Hey, wait, he didn't activate anything because he didn't want to get thrusted. Just like that, self-inflicted lethal damage. That is a 2-0 victory. <laughs> Are Flandries players going to be playing Yadagarasu? I don't think so, but uh, maybe some will for fun. Scareclaw Cash Tira. I was talking about this being a sleeper deck for the Duelist Cup, which maybe not the case anymore because we're seeing it quite a bit in today's event. We're gonna scare Claw Cash Tira, banishing with the graveyard, our light heart. And we're not making Shang Ri, just ending on this, okay? Every monster on the field is gonna be stuck in defense. We are maxing within the draw phase. We're gonna imperm negate the tryhard so our monsters are not stuck in defense. We're gonna have to play under maxi. Then rear triggering the effect of unicorn, looking at the extra deck, banishing the Zeus, triggering the effect of Fenrir, banishing the tryhard off the field. Change of heart, taking control of the unicorn, now activatable to search our deck for nothing because it gets negated. Negate. 
We also have triple tactics talent activatable right here, right now. We can take control. We could draw two. We could look at the hand. We're taking control of the Scare Claw Cash Tiro. Now we have Rise Heart banishing from the deck to banish three off the top of their deck. We're going to be negating anything we battle into. Not quite lethal damage, but you know, main phase two, maybe we have an Arise Heart play. Yep, triple Arise Heart going right into it. Anything sent to the graveyard will be banished instead. Now we got that Twin Saw, which could tribute to Scare Claw Pop 2. Gotta be careful because they can banish any card we control. Right card on resolution will trigger the Fenrir to banish it. Now the Straddle can negate the banish. Okay, so it searches for, it triggers the Fenrir by searching for a card that negates the Fenrir. All right. And the Rise Heart is going to be not only sucking up a banished card, but also banishing the right card before the Link 1 play happens. And we do have Triple Tactics Thrust into Talent into take control. That's what I'm thinking, maybe, possibly. Now, the effect of being able to banish a card on the field says once per turn, meaning it's a soft once per turn tied to the card. If it said you could only use this effect of Cash Tier Rise Heart once per turn, it would be tied to the player. You could then take control of it, you could then banish a card, but that's not how it works. You could not banish with it if you take control, if they already activated it. So what are we doing? We're thrusting into, we're still taking control. All right, we now have a Rise Heart to activate to equip a banished card. What are we doing with this Rise Heart? We're gonna Theosis on it, summoning from our deck a Unicorn. You can also trigger the Theosis to add back one of our banished Cash Tira cards. That works out. Thanks to the passive effect of a Rise Heart, everything being banished. Unicorn for birth is what I'm thinking, right? Birth, additional summon the Unicorn. Maybe we're gonna use Big Eye. Big Eye, take control of Fenrir. That's a permanent control take. No, we already used up our normal summon, so we don't have that birth play. We don't even have a way to birth a card back onto the field. We gotta do something with this Arise Heart like Zeus. So the opposing player was not able to Unicorn a Zeus out of the extra deck to ensure that there would not be a seven material Zeus. But off the top of the deck, like nothing evenly matched, gonna banish everything but the Zeus. We have triple field wipe. Not even attempting to special summon the Ogre nor Fenrir because we didn't want to get wiped up. Okay. The Zeus is blocking the Unicorn from being summoned and otherwise our other cards are not activatable. So while the Zeus is great, it's blocking us from an even greater field. 4,300 life. How can we not be finishing this duel? This is crazy. We have double dead Unicorn and all you did was make my thrust activatable to set an impermanence for a potential follow-up play to negate. This is the final turn. We have to do something. This is it. Scare Claw Cash Tier, which is summonable during the opponent's main phase. So you could technically, no, you still could not pass because they could wipe it within the battle phase, then attack directly for game. Fenrir is going to be negated, further blocking any more plays. We could end phase, wipe out the Fenrir, then attack for game. Just like that Scare Claw Cash Tira defeating Cash Tira for just game one though. Let's keep on going. Not maxing before the Link Summon of the Lightheart, so what are we doing with that Max C? Are we afraid of them thrusting off of our Max C? <laughs> We're gonna be Ash in the Field Spell anyway. Field Spell negate, just like that. And the right card, I believe, can only be special summoned once per turn this way. So, okay, that actually ended their turn. Interesting. RP Feather Duster completely wiping off the back row. The Twin Saw would have been able to pop two cards on the field as we now follow up with the Unicorn into a Theosis. Theosis on Unicorn, summoning from the deck. We got Fenrir. Fenrir searching for the Rise Heart. Rise Heart Special Summon. We're not banging our Shangri, which makes me think maybe we're not playing it. Unicorn on attack, banishing the Zeus from the extra deck because that game one giant Zeus was too much to deal with. And I, we're just hard going into a Rise Heart. This plays around Nibiru. So if there's a Nibiru in their hand right now, not usable. So if you want to be extra safe, you do not use Big Bang. It is activatable to banish any card on the field face down. We got right card searching for what I would say would be a straddle, not a rival. What can we even do with this? Lightheart into field spell. This is activating just to equip, it's not banishing it. Probably will chain banish the field spell on the activation to stop it from searching. But does Straddle protect from that? When a card targets a Scareclaw monster, we can't negate with Straddle. Straddle does not protect. 
It's not even a Scareclaw card to be, by the way. But only your monster of targeted would be protected. The Osis being banished is going to be triggered to return the unicorn back to the hand. Come to me. Well, we can't max seed now because it has to be sent to the graveyard to activate. The only time we could have max seed was turn one. All right. We're going to follow up straddle. Wait. We gain the attack of the opposing Arise Heart. We can battle over Arise Heart. Little Light Heart just killed an Arise Heart. I did not see that coming. Okay. Well, we have an open field with enough cash tears in the hand to get doing. That will trigger the Unicorn to look at the extra deck to banish a card face down. But that was a really good Ash because a follow-up birth or even a, well, you know, we could have stopped the Theosis, but a follow-up birth would have really killed us. Not, oh, I mean, that Lightheart's still 3,500. It's it's just stuck at 35. What the heck is going on? Oh my Jesus, that thing is huge. Special summoning, linking this off into Asa. Asa, steal Fenrir. Fenrir, search for uh, our Scareclaw Cash Tier, I'm thinking. Now we maxi. If we search for Scareclaw Cash Tier, we summon it. Of course, we're under maxi, but then we can make a try hard if we want to. Yeah. Uh, do we commit to try hard? No. The, that maxi is too much. Giving an additional draw two for that, not worth it. We got Ogre and the Birth. We're going to be birthing our monster back in the field, summoning our Scareclaw Cash Tira early. Now, if you battle into the Fenrir or the Scareclaw Cash Tira, your monster is immediately fully negated. Birth is reborning our Unicorn as we now make a big eye to take control of the Fenrir. Fenrir, come to me. Search for a monster that we can normal summon with our Birth, which will be our Unicorn. Come forth and summon. Search our deck for Theosis. Oh, no. Okay, maybe we're out of Theosis's. One Theosis, two Theosis. I'm sure we had another one. Change of Heart taking control of the Scareclaw Cash Tira, now making a Rise Heart. Rise Heart is here, detaching to banish the Asa face down. The big guy cannot attack directly. This is an interesting, kind of like an Unga Bunga beatdown back and forth, making Zeus with the big eye. And just holding on to that curry car. When is it going to be good? We've got Harpy Feather Duster to take out the birth, but there we already know there's a follow up birth. Now, this works out. He is Zeusing his own Arise to the graveyard, wiping out everything just to deal with this Fenrir. Before it activates the search for another Cash Tira. Thankfully, we have, we have Birth. Birth, get Birth in. Birth our monster back in the field. Non exceeds Cash Tira is what we could summon. And just like that, that is lethal damage. Yuri Evna, pure Cash Tira, defeating Scareclaw Cash Tira. Let's take this to game three. This will decide the better deck pure Cash Tira or Scareclaw Cash Tira. Early max. Okay, we're not going to play into it at all. We could have special, then drolled it, but we're going to save Droll for the next turn instead. And we're grabbing the Scareclaw Cash Tira and just ending our turn. Okay, let's see what happens here. Will Droll get him good? We're going to imperm negate the Fenrir from banishing our Unicorn. Unicorn searching for Theosis, which if you Droll after adding Theosis, it's really weak. It doesn't really accomplish too much here. It, you know, it, it stops adding Rise Heart. It's, it's pretty good. I guess it did stop making an Arise Heart, so to be fair, it did do something. Fenrir search Arise, Rise, and then summon Rise, then make the Arise. That did get stopped. And the Scareclaw Cash Tira makes the Twin Saw activatable to pop two cards in the field. Swing for 26 directly, and what's going to be good here is... We unfortunately can't chain it to the Birth unless there's another card in the field, but we could wait for them to activate Theosis. Well... We're doing it now. <laughs> That's it. What the heck? We didn't birth first. Okay. Summon the Scareclaw Cash Tira, triggering the Unicorn, looking at the extra deck, getting rid of that Baron to floor. Now we're going to Theosis onto the Scareclaw Cash Tira, summoning our Rise Heart. Rise Heart banish. And did we activate Unicorn yet? We could take control of Unicorn with Big Eye, then get searching. Recycling the birth back to the hand, by, by the way. And just as I said, Big Eye take control. Search our deck, but we already added back birth anyway. It's a permanent control take, by the way. That's something. 
We're gonna birth special summon back onto the field. Our Fenrir, Fenrir gets search and we still have our normal summon. 24, 25. That is still not lethal damage, right? That ain't lethal. Pretty banishing. Ogre, then attack. Looking at the top cards of the deck. Now, this does not shuffle. You guarantee that they're gonna draw Harpy Feather Duster or the Acro. Okay, Harpy Feather Duster is gonna get drawn. Now we gotta be careful about the Curry Kara. If any of our monsters activate, the Curry Kara is gonna get summoned, but uh, don't we lose automatically? This states that each time your opponent activates a card or effect, inflict 500 damage to the opponent, so what do you do? <laughs> That's it, it's GG. <laughs> Summon Fenrir, doesn't activate, can't activate. Attack, uh-oh, you're dead. Wait, you're not dead, you can banish it on the attack. That does work, that did work, that's good. That's not like the Despia one where you have to pay to activate. It activates after the resolution of you activating, and if it's not there, then you don't burn. So that does work out. But, you know, it then triggers their Fenrir after you using your Fenrir, so it, you were screwed either way. The Flare didn't really get outed, Oh, okay, we used their Fen Rear, which banished our Fen Rear to then summon a Curry Kara to then reborn an Ogre. Okay. But big guy, take control of Curry Kara. Swing for 200. If we could just get one more one more damage on the field. Birth will be that card. Five cards off the top of the deck. The power of big eye, it, it's something. For the mirror match, there was a game where I played the mirror match, Kashtira, Kashtira. And I wish I had a third big eye in my extra deck. It, we grinded so deep into that duel. We were big eyeing, big eyeing. I was big eyeing and then big eyeing with the big eye. And then I ran out of big eyes. Very well done. That is pure cash tier defeating Scareclaw cash tier. Let's keep on going. There was an OCG deck that topped the tournament. It was plunder plus something else. I'll look on Yu-Gi-Oh meta and show you maybe right after this duel. Maxi chain to the Theosis. It's a bit late on the Maxi, but that is okay. Unicorn banishing Zeus from the extra deck. Fen, we are searching our deck for our Tier Laments Cash Tira. Not a lot of people are playing that. We also have Triple Tactics Talent, which we played into. So the Maxi, why do you Maxi in the draw phase or standby phase? Because of all this. We lost the draw in the special summon. We triggered the Unicorn to banish from our extra deck and we triggered a Triple Tactics Talent. All of that could have been avoided, but it's okay. I do have a video on how to set the toggle correctly, and what you could do is, as the game's loading, if you just hold your left click on your mouse, you don't even have to be paying attention, you'll be toggled on at the start of the duel, and then if you have max C, then you know if you want to activate it. Ariane, a lot of people aren't playing this. Okay, uh, what is going on here? This is interesting. We just have a white beard pass. We're going to be activating the Whitebeard right here, right now. Special summoning a Plunder from the extra deck. That's going to be the same attribute as one on the field or in their graveyard. But that's going to be negated by the Impermanence. We do have Dimensional Barrier, which is kind of good, but not very good because the Cash Tira monsters before exceeding are quite large. Then we are banishing. Goodbye. Off the field you go. And then you're just going to get beat down by the regular non-exceed Cash Tiras. Goodbye, Baguska. And we milled a shadow. Wait, this is a tier, this is tier limit cash. Tier cash. Labyrinth plunder. Okay. Kit Cal on summon, search or send a tier limit. And that is too much. I mean, we could have dimensional barriered, but that would be revealing too much information. We maybe do not want them to know for game two and three that we have that dimensional barrier because we knew we were going to lose anyway. All right. Now, from the previous duel, he didn't actually get to hide the dimensional barrier because the triple tactics hunt looked at that hand, saw it. Now, Labyrinth Plunder, Cash Tira. How do we have room for this? A 41 card deck. I'm excited to see the deck list. Let's go. Special summon our Fenrir, Fenrir into the Fenrir. We got the Plunder Patrol Shipyard, discarding a Plunder to grab a Plunder. Black Eyes will reborn a monster from the graveyard. White Beard, when sent to the graveyard, will summon a Plunder from the deck. Reborn it back in the field, come forth. Well, by reborning it, it's gonna add it back to the hand, I should say, by special summoning the Black Eyes. And now we're making the Jord. Now we get Jordan. Now we're gonna be using the Golden Hair in the Graveyard, discarding a card to special summon itself onto the field. We're going to be adding back the Black Eyes in the Graveyard back to our hand to then put a token on the opponent's side of the field. We have a Dark Token. 
Can't special summon Fenrir. What do you do? We need birth. We have no birth. We got the Blackbeard summoning a dark monster. The dark one has the quick effect to banish a monster. Oh boy. Can't, can't Imperm. Can't Fenrir. This token has screwed him up. Searching for Tira, let me cash Tira, which could be summoned. We're going to be summoning a level three dragon onto the field, Destrutto. Ben, we're activating to banish it. Chain summoning these tier limits, cash tier, which on summon, we could mill three cards off of either player's deck. Gonna be ours. Getting a Fairytale Snow in the graveyard, triggering a Solik to grab a Sharon. Wow, even with the token, we're good. Discard a Shadow, activate the Shadow by also milling three. What are we milling here? We're milling, uh, is it every attribute on the entire field? Everything. Dark, earth, water. Uh, okay, let's get milling. Squamata send any shadow from the deck to the graveyard. Sending the beast to draw a card. Milling three cards. And now we are going to be using the Tear Let Me Cash Tear and Hobness to make a Kit Kalos. On summon, we're going to be activating to search or send from our deck. We're not in perming. As we add a scream with the effect of the Kit Cal randomly drawing into the Rhino. Wait, did we, what did we just do there? We activated the mower to discard to banish the Kit Cal, and we're gonna chain the Fairytale Snow to the Kit Cal being banished. Okay, come forth and summon the snow. We're gonna be searching for the shipyard on the resolution of that banish. We're now gonna flip down the patrol ship mower. We're gonna be using the Whitebeard being sent to the graveyard, discarded by the cost of the Mowork to activate to summon a monster from the deck here. Also chaining the Blackbeard to summon from the extra deck, the Liss. Liss is a monster negate. So we are waiting for a monster negate worth negating. We have Tier Limit Scream. We're gonna be using the Liss effect, which could special summon a monster from the back row. Come back, Mowork, or I should say from the hand that is. Is it back row or, yeah, from your hand or face up spell and trap zone. Rhino Heart is going to be chain link blocked by the Scream, so it cannot be negated. Sending the Hobness here. Tom, I see that $5, my friend. I'm going to read that in a bit. Adding back the Celiac with the effect of the Heartbeat being sent to the graveyard. Now making a Baguska in attack position. Untargetable. Swinging in, summoning a Jord from the extra deck. Boosting up the field so we cannot take out the list by battle. We still have that monster negate. Wow, passing. This is an incredible duel here. This is making me want to play Plunder Labyrinth. We're going to be adding back the White Beard with the effect of the Black Eyes trigger and the Scream. Mill three off the top of the deck, reducing the entire field by 500, now making a Brawn. Brawn could discard a card, banish a back row card. We're going to be using the Blue Beard, discard Fenrir to randomly draw a card, discard the Shipyard, banishing the Impermanence, using it on the list. The Monster Negate is now negated. We're going to chain Special Summon a monster from our hand or from the back row. This will be from the back row, summoning onto the field our Red Beard. Alrighty. Now, Red Beard and White Beard can only activate during the opponent's turn to summon a monster from the extra deck, but the Black Beard can do it whenever. We're gonna be using the effect of the Red Beard, equipping onto the Brawn, going into battle here. Sullik is going to negate the boost, but we're still up to 2,500 attack. Liss is gonna discard to negate the Sharon from Fusion Summoning here. Okay, what are we doing with this attack? Big Baguska, 2600 attack, making a shadow window. Each player is locked into summoning only once. Blackbeard is going to be special summoning from the extra deck, get summoning into the Mowork. Mowork's gonna be able to discard a card to banish a card in the field, but we cannot target the Baguska, but we're big enough to attack over it, so it's fine. Goodbye to the token, Mowork discard a card, banishing the window off the field. We're gonna chain the Fairytale Snow banishing the window off of the field. This is the most insane duel I've seen in a while. What is going on? Snow come forth on summon, flip a card in the field face down. Mowork is not gonna be able to be banishing our monsters now, but the Blackbeard could summon another one. If we have another one, we're out of Mowork. We're gonna be using the Chandelier, setting up a big welcome labyrinth. There's so much of this deck, triggering the Ku Clock to go back to the hand here. Now we need the clock to be summoned on the field in order to activate the Big Welcome Labyrinth if we were not locked into Plunder Monsters Only, potentially. Uh, which one locks you in? I'm gonna have to look that up after or during this duel. After this duel, I'm gonna look it up. 
Setting up a welcome with a big welcome plus a negate, plus we could banish a back row. Well, this is actually negated. We have Blackbeard, which could be summoning into, well, we're like running out of card. We have Liss, we could summon Liss. Big welcome Labyrinth. Let's go. Chain link to the big welcome Labyrinth, summoning the lovely Labyrinth. Returning the Mowork back to then summon the Mowork back in the field. Whoa. That was crazy. We needed that Mowork. Lovely's gonna pop a card on the field or in the hand. Chandelier, Torby. Torby's gonna summon. Mowork's gonna discard. It's gonna banish the Distrutto off of the field. We still have the Brand effect to banish a back row if we want. Okay. Well, actually, it's negated, so we do not have that. Goodbye to the Fenrir. Redbeard is going to equip onto the Plunder, which is negated. It's got Sullyx, right? That's why it's permanently negated? I think so. Come forth, Fairy Tail Snow on Summon, flipping down the Brawn that was negated anyway. Goodbye to you. And uh, wow, he's got so much advantage. Five cards in the hand, a ton of cards in the field, <laughs> just like that. Plunder Labyrinth taking a game two victory. Ain't no way. Let's hop on the next duel. Game three, turn one, going to Tier Lament, Shadow. I want to play both players' decks. Wait, Tier Lament, Shadow, and Cash Tira? Is this just for the Tier Lament, Cash Tira, though? Plus Fenrir, maybe? Maxi early into the Ash Negate. Alrighty. Let's get cooking with the Rhino, except we have an impermanence to deal with. Not using Imperm on a Kid Kalos instead. But this paid off. It worked. We did not have to save the Imperm for the Kid Cal. We're dealing with a permanent monster negate here. Ku Klux setting up into the back row, chaining the Torby, discarding the Daruma. This will trigger the effect of the Ku Klux to summon onto the fields. And then the Big Welcome Labyrinth is activatable. We could summon a lovely, return back the clock, then destroy a card in the field. I think we're doing that. That's exactly what we're doing. Lovely, return the clock, activate, get pop in. Now, the Sullyak negating this is really important. Huh? <laughs> okay. Never mind. I mean, like, by negating it, it also would not be able to recycle a normal trap from the graveyard. So it pops and recycles a card from the grave. So, hmm. All right, that's the recycle. I mean, that's a lot of advantage that I feel like we had to stop. Tier Lament Cash Tira milling into a Sharon. Sharon being sent to the graveyard and activating a fuse into the Kick Cal. Kick Cal sending or searching. We're going to send Hobnus to then fuse with our field and graveyard to now make a Kaleido Heart. Kaleido Heart is here on summon. Spin a card in the field back into the deck. Goodbye, White Beard, which would have been activatable during the opponent's turn here. Chaos Angel. Your monsters will be indestructible by battle. It's not unaffected from monster effects. We're going to banish any card in the field. Goodbye to the Kaleido, gone from the duel. Now, a Crime being sent to the graveyard could recycle the Kaleido back into the extra deck. And we have Imperm waiting for that birth. But the birth, if we use it early, before we get a monster on the field, it's not gonna be negated by the impermanence. Summoning our unicorn, now imperm is going to negate the unicorn before you even try to summon from the hand a potential cash tira. We have big welcome is going to, I, I can't believe big welcome works while you have a chaos angel on the field because it doesn't specify that you have a level eight or higher labyrinth monster. It's a level eight or higher fiend monster. So it works with chaos angel to spin their monster back. That is disgusting. Triggering the Torby, discarding the clock, setting from the deck. Clock's going to activate to, well, clock has to be in the graveyard when you discard it. It does not work if you discard it itself. Summon Maxi so that we could big welcome Labyrinth, the lovely returning back the Maxi, then popping a card in the field. Oh my Jesus. It's just like that, it's lethal. Pop the scream, go for game, activate, get wiping, Torby get triggering, summing itself back onto the field. Holy moly. Big welcome works with Lava Golem too. Do you find that out the hard way? Scream triggered to search for the meta noise and just like that, without even using plunder for game three, defeating Tier Limit Cash Tira Shadow with our Plunder Labyrinth. Let's go. 
safer discards. Grabbing our Lubelian, Lubelian searching for our Magna Hut. Yeah, um, hmm, what happened here? Because you would then be able to, I mean, you, you could re even reborn this and wouldn't it be better to make a Borland instead of this? I guess you could still make Borland with the Regained and the Druid Swarm in the hand, so maybe that's what we're planning on doing anyway. Okay. We got a big welcome set up for the back row. We are ready. And with the Max C and the Mascarina, we could Chainlink block a Lady from setting a trap during uh, the activation of the Big Welcome. If we were able to get a Lady on the field, we're gonna be chaining Max C to the Pot of E in case they draw into something that would negate the Max C. But I'm not sure if that's worth activating, especially if we know we're playing against Labyrinth. Regain being triggered to summon the Magna Huff from the Graveyard. Now we can Mascarina into a Borland if we want. Borland would be indestructible from something like a lovely activating to pop it. We max seed and pot of Eid, so we can't add with max seed. Nightmare Unicorn on summon, discard a card, spin a card in the field, back into the deck, forcing out the use of the Big Welcome Labyrinth. Big Welcome into, I'm thinking, lovely, lovely return back to Ariana. Activate lovely, pop a card in the field. We can't pop the Unicorn, it's indestructible. We pop a card in the hand instead, or we take out the Regained. Regain's kind of annoying. We do want to get rid of that. Now, the Unicorn being indestructible by card effects, not indestructible by battle. Taking it out, we got Chandelier discarding, setting up the Labyrinth Field Spell. Okay, we could reset up a Labyrinth card in the Graver to use the Field Spell. Whoa, uh, setting a uh, Evenly Matched instead of the Big Welcome. Okay, we could use Big Welcome while it's in the Graveyard to spin a card back. That's really interesting. So what was that? Okay. Why reverser? Now, Chaos Angel. Unaffected from monster effects, indestructible by battle. Banish a card on the fields. Let's go. It's a misclick. You think he misclicked? Probably. Yeah. We're gonna be banishing that Daruma. Daruma be gone. Now, we are really going in as Rocket Tracer is going to pop the Collapse Serpent, summoning from the deck a Recharger, triggering Collapse Serpent to grab our Wyver Burster. We're locked into Dark Monsters only from the extra deck. Dark could summon a Dark Monster from the opposing graveyard. We're going to be using the Big Welcome, spinning back the Dark, activating the Lovely, which if we don't attempt to destroy the Chaos Angel, which is unaffected, we pop a card from the hand instead. Jura Swarm is going to be banishing the Torby from the graveyard so it does not summon itself onto the field but the Chandelier will still be adding back to the hand. We can pop the Druid Storm if we want, then Druid Storm will send the Lovely to the grave. Oh, geez. It's unaffected, so we tried to destroy it. Now, the timer could be low, and the nerves could be high. High anxiety, high nerves, low timer equals uh, something like that happening. We have Welcome Labyrinth, and also uh, maybe our timer is low when we grabbed evenly instead of Big Welcome. Welcome, Labyrinth, to the fields. It is destroyable through the effect of the trap, which the effect was given by the field spell. That does work. And we are now setting up a big welcome. Now, despite these mishaps, it looks like Labyrinth is still in a great position. Recycling a card from the graveyard with the lovely activating the big welcome, summoning the lady, returning back to Ariana, triggering the effect of the lovely, using the field spell to take up the Jura Swarm. And goodbye a card from the hand. Did we not Ash a big welcome? Because we can't. Lovely makes it so you can't chain monster effects to traps. That's why she, another reason why she's nuts. Drew Swarm sending the lovely. Adding back the chandelier. Chandelier or Torby could trigger the Ku Clock in the graveyard to go back to the hand to make the welcome labyrinth activatable. Special summoning our lady into defense. We are now going to be synchroing this into our own Chaos Angel. Both players whipping out Chaos Angel. Nibiru is going to be tributing the entire field to come forth and summon a token that is over 8,000 attack. 
Using the effect of the chandelier to set up the big welcome, triggering the cuckoo clock to add back to the hand. Now, what's interesting here is why does the welcome labyrinth have this no symbol on it? Because there's a hidden effect on Lovely. Lovely states that the card you set with its effect is not usable unless you control a fiend type monster. Fiend, right? Not labyrinth? Where is she? You have to, I can't read it. Konami keeps hiding it. You have to control a fiend to use it. Making Dark. Dark is here attempting to take control of the Chaos Angel and by doing so it actually activates. This doesn't activate on Synchro, it activates on Special Summon, banishing the token off the fields. Now we're gonna have the big welcome. Ash is going to negate and we can't use the regular welcome labyrinth because of the lovely restriction. No one in the physical card game would remember this. There's no way. 100% uh, I guarantee this has been activated multiple times with no fiend on the field. Now, we can normal summon the clock, then activate the Welcome Labyrinth. Summoning from the deck in Ariana, popping the Chaos Angel with the field spell, activating the search from our deck. What are we searching? Torby's also activating, Chandelier activating. Torby onto the field, Chandelier back to the hand. We want to get the Ku Clock. We could get it in the graveyard with the Muckraker. Then activate Chandelier to then use the... There we go. Easy. It's like, I'm playing, I'm playing. Discard Reborn Chaos Angel. Banish a card in the fields. Or Lovely. And then trigger the effect of the Ku Clock with the effect of Torby discarding a card from the hand. Use Big Welcome, spin back the dark, pop a card from the hand. Holy moly. Did we... We already welcomed, we already Big Welcome. So setting up with the Torby to add back the clock. I guess we did not want to do that for the next turn follow-up. Not that we even needed it, because we have so much cards, so much back row, so much protection. Lovely protecting the back row from being ashed. Holy moly. I'm loving La Labyrinth. Labyrinth is a very good deck. You should definitely consider it. If you do not like Purely, you then play Cash. If you don't like Cash, you then play Labyrinth. Those are my top three picks for the Duelist Cup. Ravine discarding Serenir, which will trigger the Serenir to send a Lubellion, which will add back to the hand with the effect of the Seyfert. And then we're going to be searching our deck for Abysteel, and Abysteel's is quite good against Labyrinth. If they get a Lovely in the graveyard or even the Clock in the graveyard, banish it. Now, a lot of them play more than one Clock, but they only play one Lovely. Ash is going to be negating the Max C. Now making the Boar Load Savage Dragon. Equip a Link, Omni Negate, plus Monster Negate, and a Bestial to banish one of their monsters in the graveyard. Now they do have a evenly matched to break this field. Okay, we're gonna Ku Clock first. Boar Load is going to negate, so the Boar Load did not want to negate the Ku Clock. I think reasonably so. That would not have been a good negate. And the negate's gone at least. And we just have to deal with the Borland. We're going to be discarding the Dogmatic Punishment, triggering the effect of the clock to summon itself onto the field, to then use the Big Welcome Labyrinth, to then summon from the deck, returning back the clock for Lovely to be permanently negated by the Borland. Now, unfortunately, the Borland cannot be destroyed by card effects, so we cannot use the Big Welcome to destroy it. But the Big Welcome could still deal with it while it's in the graveyard during the next turn, we could spin it back, and that would be good. But the Lovely is still going to be permanently negated. Stovey, activate, perma negate. You cannot add a trap from the graveyard. You do not get to pop. And we are also going to be using our Bistial to banish your Torby from being summoned back onto the fields. Now with just this, big welcome, spin back the Borland, and I'm curious if we're gonna just re-summon the Borland. Do we just wait? Maybe we just wait with the big welcome. By waiting, we uh, now get negated by the Baron Floor. Yeah, we're getting sent to the graveyard, so we're being forced to activate the big welcome as the Baron is going to negate, open field, and now we just have to put up 8,000 damage and we're good. Do, do we have anything in the graveyard activatable here? Do we have a safer? We do have a safer. And safer's gonna add back. What do we have there? Where is our Lubellion? No Lubellion. The gate bearing the floor, summoning from the graveyard, our rocket tracer over 8,000 damage just like that. 
taking this into a game three. Okay. Special summoning our Fenrir, Fenrir into the Fenrir. We have Ariana grabbing the Ku Clock. Send the clock to make the big welcome activatable. Summoning from the deck our Lovely. Returning back to our hand to trigger the Lovely to now pop a card from the hand, randomly taking out the Serenir, which will send a Luvelian. We can now recycle the big welcome from the graveyard back onto the field we go. Now back to you. What do, what do? We're gonna be banishing for the Wyvern Burster. Now Max seeing, you could say that this does play around Gamma if you wanna cope about that. Lubellion searching for Druid Swarm. Not protecting our Ku Clock by chaining the big welcome, but you did trigger our Fenrir to banish. And now we got Striker Dragon. So the big question is when do we lovely pop? We could wait for the Ravine to then pop it on a separate chain link. So since they don't have a way to get it back, Otherwise, you could just wait before they would summon a Borland, but I mean, what are you popping? You try to pop a Link to to make it more difficult to summon. Activating the Ravine, and we are not using the lovely Labyrinth here to pop it before it activates. Sending Absorator to grab a Recharger, as we didn't really need the Tracer because we already had it in the hand. Now making Unicorn to force out something. You gotta do something. Forcing the activation with Unicorn onto the Big Welcome Labyrinth. Maybe it would have been better to, uh, no, yeah, no, this was good because you spin back the Lovely, you let it go back and then you activate it to go back on the field. So this does work. And the Lovely will be activated to get popping. Summon Torby, add back Torby, Wyvern Burser, come back to me. Lovely, wipe out a Link 3. I think that works out well. This should be enough to protect us. Unicorn is gone. I don't think we could OTK this. What do you think? Food sector launch into the tracer, pop in the field spell, summoning our recharger into a Nibiru before he summons a chaos ruler. Yeah, I guess that works out. You could technically Nibiru on the resolution of an Axis Code Talker if he were to even get that far. I also don't want him to just fill up the grave and add a light or dark among the five cards we're milling. And thanks to Max C, we pretty much got this duel. <laughs> That's it. Game three stolen by Max C. It's not fair. And that is the conclusion of the top 16. I appreciate you very much. We're going to be going into the top eight plus grand finale, which will be a separate video as we're going to be editing that video. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, and watching as much as you can of the video. It greatly supports us. With that said, let's go.